How's it going, folks? I wanted to do another video, but it's kind of late, and I got a crazy Christian New Age hypochondriac lady living underneath me in my apartment complex, and <sighs> yeah, playing music pisses her off. <laughs> I do it anyway, but not when it gets late. I'm not going to be a dick about it. But I'm entitled at certain times, I think. Like when I want to read this book. Chapter 4 of Alma. Following my last reading, which I only had one beer, so I thought, Let's do another reading. Besides, I want to finish this book, and I don't want to spend a year doing it. I think I've already been about six months at it. Now it came to pass, in the sixth year of, oh, asterisk, B.C. 86. God, we're just counting out down to Jesus. I mean, they couldn't even wait. I mean, the rest of the world had to wait to become Christians, but I mean, they they jumped the gun and became Christians uh, centuries before Christianity. Sort of. <coughs> Ooh, deadly. The sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. There were no contentions nor wars in the land of Zarahemla, the sixth year. But the people were afflicted, yea, greatly afflicted, for the loss of their brethren, and also for the loss of their flocks and herds and also for the loss of their fields of grain, which were trodden down, trodden underfoot, and destroyed by the Lamanites. And so great were their afflictions that every soul had cause to mourn, and they believed that it was the judgment of God sent upon them because of their wickedness. And their abominations. I'll drink to that. Therefore, they were awakened to a remembrance of their duty. And they began to establish the church more fully. Yea. And many were baptized in the waters of Sidon, Sidon and were joined to the church of God. Yea. They were baptized by the hand of Alma, Jr., who had been consecrated the high priest over the people of the church by the hand of his father, Alma, Sr. Neither one of them are Levites. That's the weird part. I thought they were supposed to be Levites, not from Joseph and Jacob's line. <sighs> and it came to pass in the seventh year of the reign of the judges there were about 3,500 souls that united themselves to the church of God and were baptized. And thus ended the seventh year 
of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And there was continual peace in all that time. And it came to pass in the eighth year of the reign of the judges that the people of the church began to wax proud because of their exceeding riches and their fine silks, which somehow they, I don't know where they get silk in America or even South America, anywhere. It's, it's from China, right? Shit. <sighs> I'm not doing research. I'm doing this cold. But come on, silk in America. And their fine twined linen, and because of their many flocks and herds, and their gold and their silver, and all manner of precious things, which they had obtained by their industry, and in all these things, their they, things were they lifted up in the pride of their eyes. For they began to wear costly apparel, a real big hang up about clothes and shit, clothes and blood, blood and clothes. <sighs> and loins and fruit and shit coming to pass. Now, this was the cause of much affliction to Alma, yea, and to many of the people whom Alma had consecrated to be teachers and priests and elders over the church. Yea, Many of them were sorely grieved for the wickedness which they saw had began to be among their people. For they saw and beheld with great sorrow that the people of the church began to be lifted up in the pride of their eyes, like he just said in the preceding verse, verse. But they saw it, so we had to state it all over again, so we know they saw it. <sighs> they figured it out. They're a little slow. We're ahead of them. <laughs> That's what makes us so boring. <laughs> that and other things. <sighs> yeah, pride of their eyes. And to be... That's verse 7 and 8. Uh, and to set their hearts upon riches and upon the vain things of the world. This world. Not the one they like. That they began to be scornful one towards another. And they began to persecute those that did not believe according to their own will and pleasure. And thus, in this eighth year of the reign of the judges, there began to be great contentions among the people of the church. Yea, there were envyings and strife and malice and persecutions and pride, and uh, oh, even to exceed the pride of those who did not belong to the church of God, because they have so much pride. I mean, who wouldn't be proud not to belong to that? It's like, yeah, I didn't fall for it. <laughs> I'm proud of that. I am. I'm so stiff-necked and proud. And thus ended the eighth year of the reign of the judges. So at least we're getting the temperature of the time. 
you know, hot, cold, hot, cold. Something kind of happened. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> yeah. And thus ended the eighth year of the reign of the judges, and the wickedness of the church was a great stumbling block to those who did not belong to the church. And thus the church began to fail in its progress. Its progress. What's it working towards? World domination, right? Progress. Think about that one. And it came to pass, in the commencement of the ninth year, Alma saw the wickedness of the church. Took him that long? <laughs> Alma noticed <laughs> in the ninth year. Oh. <laughs> uh. Tired, excuse me. Long day. <laughs> he saw the wickedness of the church, and he saw also that the example of the church began to lead those who were unbelievers uh, on from one piece of iniquity to another, thus bringing on destruction of the people. Yea, he saw great iniquity among the people, some lifting themselves up in their pride, despising others, turning their backs upon the needy and the naked, and those who were hungry, and those who were thirst, and those who were sick and afflicted. Now this was a great cause for lamentation among the people, while others were abasing themselves, succoring those who stood in need of their succor, succor, <laughs> such as imparting their substance to the poor and the needy, feeding the hungry and suffering all manner of afflictions, but right, the hungry and suffering all manner of afflictions, for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, who should come according to the spirit of prophecy. See, they, they know he's going to come in the year B.C. 83. They know. They've been worshiping him all this time. It's, it's like a bad jungle movie. <laughs> <sighs> Looking forward to that day, which one, when he's born or when he croaks and comes back and then leaves and we're still waiting, but he, that next time maybe, which one? <laughs> the Jews are still waiting for him to come for the first time. We're waiting for him to come, well, I guess according to you guys, the third time. Damn. <sighs> Mr. Money Shot. <laughs> Looking forward to that day, thus retaining a remission of their sins, being filled with great joy because of the resurrection of the dead, according to the will and power and deliverance of Jesus Christ from the bands of death. And now it came to pass that Alma, having, a seen, having seen the afflictions of the humble followers of God and the persecutions which were heaped upon them by the remainder of his people and seeing all their iniquity, being to a very sorrowful, 
began to be very sorrowful. Sorry, my vision's getting blurry. I guess I'm tired. Nevertheless, the Spirit of the Lord did not fail him. I guess I could be wearing my reading glasses, but <coughs> I did that, and I don't like the way it looks on video. <sighs> and it's large print. And he selected a wise man who was among the elders of the church and gave him power according to the voice of the people that he might have power to enact laws according to the laws which had been given and to put them in force according to the wickedness and crimes of the people. Now, this man's name was... Nephi Ha. Nephi Ha. Nephi Ha. Nephi Ha. I like that one. Right. Nephi Ha. <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think it would translate. <laughs> His name was Nephi Ha, and he was appointed chief judge, and he sat in the judgment seat to judge and to govern the people. Now Alma did not grant unto him the office of being high priest, where the real power is, over the church, but he retained the office of high priest. That's mighty wide of you. Unto himself. But he delivered the judgment seat unto Nephi Ha. And this he did that he himself might go forth among his people or among the people of Nephi. Does he have some other people? Or the people of Nephi? His people or the people of Nephi? <sighs> Wasting space, writing on gold. That's all I'm going to say. <sighs> that he might preach the word of God unto them, to stir up in remembrance, to stir them up in remembrance of their duty, that he might pull down by the words of God, all the pride and craftiness and all the contentions which were among his people, seeing no way that he might reclaim them save it were bearing down in pure testimony against them. And thus, in the commencement of the ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, Alma delivered up the judgment seat to Nephi. -ha. Lots of repetition there, huh? Mr. Gold Book Writer Guy. Mr. Dead Gold Book Writer Guy. Lots of repetition there. <sighs> Nephi. -ha. And confined himself wholly to the high priesthood of the holy order of God to the testimony of the word according to the spirit of revelation and prophecy. Crazy lady below. Real nut job. <laughs> Peace. The fuck. Out. And if she asks me what I'm doing, I'll just tell her I, I was praying real loud. I'm sorry. Praise Jesus. Anyway, have a Wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you might be having. And I guess I'll do some more of these videos tomorrow just to get out of the way. <laughs> I want to finish this book as quick as I can. 